Hello everyone, is everyone, can everyone hear me okay? Just doing a quick sound test because I always plug my microphone in last so I'm hoping you guys can hear me. I can see that there's some people here already. I do, um, I'm getting in the habit now of starting around about five minutes earlier just to let people come into the room and um, start chatting and so if you're here say hi, I'd love to hear from you. So I hope you've all had a great week. So we're going to be working on Christmas theme today, so I'm really excited about this one. So let me have a quick look at the comments now. Hi Debbie. Hi Louise. Hi Jan and Letitia. So Letitia's saying hola. Hello. And we have, uh, I've said Debbie already. So yeah, she's from Woking in Surrey. So I'm based in Hertfordshire. And hi Cecilia. Hi Lynn, are you still awake? Yes, so she's still awake at the minute, but not sure for how long. Well, let's hope I don't send you to sleep. So, but if you do have to go, then there's always the replay. And there will, they haven't done the cutting guide yet, but there will be a cutting guide added after the show and I'll be adding that on afterwards. And again, I may have internet problems. You'd think that I would be living in the middle of the woods, but I don't. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we have been having um, internet issues through lockdown. We've never had internet issues before, only until we got to lockdown, so I'm, I'm sure it's something related to that already. So, um, again, there might be buffering. If I disappear, I'll do my best to come back. Um, okay, so let's get back to the comments. So, hi Casey, hi Anna, all from Germany. And yes, Connie says she can hear me, that's good. Hi Louise, hi again, oh, I think I've already said hello to you. And hi Gloria. Oh, she's from Michigan, is that Southwest SW? I've got Chantel. And yes, yes, you can hear me, Debbie. Oh, there's, oh, there's two Debbies here, we've got Dave, uh, Debbie Ravenhill. Lovely, she can hear me loud and clear. And we have Eva, also from Germany. So Debbie's had a great crafting week, that's really good to hear. I did a little bit of tidying up yesterday. Um, underneath my desk was horrendous, absolutely everything had been stockpiled under there, probably for the last um, two years. <laughs> so it was completely messy, I just pulled everything out and I put a new shelf unit under there. Um, I had. Uh, a printer delivered a couple of days ago and I'll be doing an unboxing video so my box is under there on the shelf ready to go so um, it's a new eco tank and I've been saving up for that one for a while and it, uh, a couple of weeks ago it went out of stock and I was like, oh no I've literally just saved up for it and it's gone out of stock but then a couple of days later it came back in stock and so I I got it um, straight away and again a day a day later it went back out of stock again I don't know if it's back in but I will I will check but um, I will be doing an unboxing and a setup and a first print as well um, I know that you love all this uh, digital crafting we've got nitwits and we have um, loads of other new places that I'm discovering as well so I'll be getting into that very shortly so let's keep on looking at the comments so I will be starting very soon so we're four minutes in so far and I have a good amount of viewers here for me to feel comfortable in starting so that if anyone else is joining they're not going to miss too much so um, okay so we have here uh, Letitia, oh la la la, <laughs> she's singing a song there. Um, we have, oh, I don't think I'll be able to say that, but I'm going to give it a go. It's Salsian, is it Silsian? Celestian? There we go, Celestian quilt. Got there, third or fourth time lucky, I hope. And she's in Poland. Oh, she says I'm Margaret. That, that's a lot easier to say. <laughs> okay, so we have Connie Smith. Hi, she's from Pennsylvania. I do have relatives in Pennsylvania as well, so. Um, it's a place I've always wanted to go to. And um, we have Casey, Baltimore, uh, Sharon, hi Sharon, Jemima. We had, um, we're getting chickens again. Um, I'm, I'm not, this has just sparked my memory here. We're getting chickens again, but um, we've previously had chickens before. We had this lovely white chicken and we called her Jemima and she was 
so naughty. We couldn't get her to go into the coop at night. She'd run around. Mr. G would be running around with the, at, at dusk with this chicken going, brrk, brrk. and, you know, she'd lay an egg and it would be, brrk, and she wouldn't, you know, stop making a noise until you'd um, taken the egg. And if there was a car alarm that went off as well, you know, she'd be brrk, <laughs> trying to copy the noises that they make. So, yeah, she was a little bit of a handful. Um, but, yeah, we called her Jemima, but she, she was a nice chicken. She was, but she was incredibly naughty. So they, the, I think the white ones, um, I think they're called white stars. I think they definitely have a personality. So, but um, I don't think we're going to be getting any more white stars for this first round anyway. Okay, so back to the comments. Um, got Caroline, hi, hi Caroline. And Diana, hi Diana. Ruby Rouge, oh I like that name. And MDXX. And Debbie's asking me, was I recommended the printer? Um, no, I wasn't. It was something I'd found myself. Um, I have an eco tank already, but it's more office based um, type. So I have done a lot of research into what type of eco tank I wanted. So I bought um, a couple of years ago the like level entry basic eco tank just to try it out before I wanted to move up to a more expensive one. Um, it, I've I was really really pleased with it I really really was and I still am and it's now become it's going to become the family printer um, but as I said it's more office type so it doesn't do borderless and it doesn't do photo resolution but the resolution is still really really good so um, I started saving up for the next one up um, I could have gone for an A3 but this one is A4 I do have an A3 printer already as you can tell I'm printer mad so um, oh, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Great chicken sound effects. Oh, you could hear her for miles, not miles, but you could hear her from the other side of the house. You know, I was worried, worried about what the neighbours were thinking. This noisy chicken. <laughs> we might as well have had a rooster, to be honest. You know, and if you didn't get her out of the, the coop early enough in the morning, you know, she'd be in there making a lot of noise as well. I'm sure she annoyed all the other chickens. So, so yeah. But anyway, um... I know I'm going to be pleased with this printer and this one does borderless, it does the high photo resolution and it came with two sets of the inks as well. So the Eco Tank it comes with liquid ink, you don't have cartridges and each fill up um, is going to last round about um, I think it's two years printing. So there's quite a lot there, especially if you're doing all these digital kits. So. Um, hi Mars, is it Marcella? Marcella? Oh I'm really bad with the uh, foreign names, I'm really sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Ah, Jemima, usually ducks are Jemima, not her a chicken <laughs> sharing my name. But we thought because she was white and she was a little bit, a little bit naughty, <laughs> we call her Jemima. So let's dive in to today's project. I'm going to try my best to keep an eye on the comments as well, but it's right across the other side of my desk. So I can just about see it from here, but I'd get so distracted in working and doing things um, I forget to look at the comments but I know you guys like to talk so happy happily talk amongst yourselves as well okay so I have everything laid out in front of me so let's show you the project this is a really old project I think it was um, from 2017 it's from my 12 days of Christmas 2017 I believe when I find the link I will add it down below there is a, a, a short list of things that I'm using today as well down below and then after the show I'll be adding the dimensions for everything because I have everything here okay so this we're going to be making a very similar project to this today so this is an, an accordion mini album box and it opens up like this and then it opens out like that so if you want to make this particular project there is a tutorial for this one and um, it will be on my YouTube channel somewhere and after the video I will link it down below so um, this was an old Hobbycraft uh, paper collection. It has a magnetic closure. I'm going to try my best to remember to do the magnetic closure for this one today. So we're going to be making um, a double. So we're going to have two rows of these pockets and it's going to be a little bit smaller as well. So I'm just looking for the templates that I made earlier. I'm sure I've put them somewhere. 
here they are I'm going to need these because I didn't write the measurements down okay so here is my little template here oh, I always try and do it out of plain paper first before I cut and score into my nice stuff so let's have a quick look at the collection we're going to be using today so it's a digital collection it's from snap click supply and at the moment because it's national scrapbooking day they are having a special offer at the moment so I'm just going to click on that you won't be able to see it but I will um, so I can read it out they have I think it's an American yes it is it's in dollars so it's American um, so they have 25% off physical products and 50% off all digital products. So I'm interested in the digital products because um, I live in the UK, so I don't really want to be having, um, I don't think I've bought many things overseas anyway, because um, the, the shipping's quite a large amount, but digital, I'm good with, I'm good, I'll, I'll happy with that. And I'm extra happy, they have 50% off and it ends on the 3rd of May and they have, um, designers from Echo Park, Basic Grey, Bow Bunny, Carter Bella, Cosmo Cricket, um, Laurie Whitlock, that Prima Marketing, there is just so much here. Echo Park as well, so we're using Echo Park today and the collection we're using is Here Comes Santa Claus, so I really love this one and I have bought a few already. Um, the discount is added when you go on to your um, shopping cart. I'm not affiliated with this company whatsoever. I just really like this this website, so I'm sharing it out. So I have everything cut out already. So this is an example of some of the papers. Now I didn't use an eco tank for this one. This was just my standard um, printer that takes cartridges. As you can see, I have I have quite a few printers. <laughs> Okay, so these are really, really nice. You've got tartans and you have all of these Santas here as well. And I'll be making my pockets out of these and I'll be probably delving into my offcuts as well. And this seems to be a Nutcracker and um, Father Christmas or Santa Claus themed. Let me have some wreaths here and I know that... Um, the print quality will be a lot better because I've just used um, super smooth white cardstock for this but I do like to use the Epson um, presentation paper for that but I will be doing a separate video um, on the papers that I use as well because it's really useful to know kind of what to buy to get the best results so those are the papers and then we have all of these cutouts here so we have I just printed these off small because I know we have it, we're having a small album, but the resolution is there for you to do them a little bit bigger. And this is just a selection. There's loads more that I didn't print out. And I don't know if I'll be, I probably won't be using all of these, but there's gonna be so many leftovers for me to actually make Christmas cards out of these as well. So uh, Santa Claus is coming to town, Merry and Bright, Candy Cane Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses. Santa Claus is coming to town. So if you like this collection, let me know in the comments. And obviously after the show, pop over to Snap Click Happy, no, Snap Click Supply and have a look. Don't spend too much. It's really easy just to get carried away, especially with a 50% off deal. And I think that ends tomorrow. Okay, so those are the, the larger ones. And then we have some teeny weeny ones here as well. We've got the Nutcracker. So you can make some really small Christmas cards out of these ones. Maybe this will be perfect for gift tags as well. And then we have some cut parts here as well, cutouts. I like this one. I, I've set that one aside just in case I wanna make a feature of that. And then in this little wallet here, I have some teeny tiny ones. The resolution's there for a little bit bigger. But then I have all of these little nutcrackers and we've got um, banners as well. And we have um, another banner here that spells out Merry. I think there's two choices of the Merry that you can you can print out. So um, I, I did this on a Word document, a Microsoft Word document, so I can get everything the same size. Let's set that aside. And I also have some photos here. I'm just trying not to forget 
anything so I have some naughty elves that were naughty this was our Christmas 2017 I think it was um, I'll show you these photos a little later on so let's have a quick look at the comments and then we can start making ah so Kelly's saying she's glad she's caught the live yep I'm like that too I think oh yes I didn't miss it this time Oh, Casey's asking if I know about the AC Digitals and the Simple Stories. Yes, I've just, I've had a I've bought a few things from the Simple Stories, and I've found with the Simple Stories, um, the resolution is not as good as the ones from SnapClick Supply, um, but they're still very usable. And I've used um, in the last two weeks we did the the vintage album here. Uh, I can't remember what it was called now. Let's have a see if I can remember. I'm sure you do. Uh, vintage, simple vintage, uh, simple vintage botanicals is what we used last time. So I do like I do like the simple stories, and I've had a quick look at uh, AC Digitals, but I haven't actually bought anything from there yet. I should really just buy one just to test it out, see how it goes. Uh, Lynn's back. She's had to dash off and come back. So Debbie's wondering about whether she needs a new printer. Yes, watch the um, unveiling of mine, and there may be other um, printers different on different, you know, price settings. Um, the theory behind the eco printer is that it's uh, cheaper to run. So traditionally, with printers, you have a cheap printer and super expensive cartridges which is not fun because you know you, you you print out a whole bunch of stuff and then you have to buy and then you're tempted to buy the compatible inks and they're not as good quality um well they are but sometimes you have the risk of them fading and and things like that so with the eco tank it's the opposite so you have an expensive printer and cheap inks and they last for absolutely ages as well so um, in the lot it's a, it's a long-term investment especially if you're doing all this digital printing which is perfect for when you're in lockdown and um, not having things shipped to you and all that um, it's absolutely perfect for that so that is the theory behind eco tank and I just think it's really great that I can now afford to buy genuine eco tank bottles I have one here I have this is from the box here this is one of them this is the yellow so this is like two years worth of ink just in this bottle and then you get one for each colour and the one I've got I've got a photo black as well because it's a photo specialist so I can just print off loads of um, photos now I'm going to buy the Epson branded photo paper because I know it will have the archival um, qualities to that and it's branded so I'm, I'm happy to go ahead with that and it's not that expensive um, and then I can just print off my own photo so I don't even have to send off for them as well so I have that freedom of sizes and it, it to me it's guilt free printing because I know that I don't have to keep my tabs on how much cartridges or how much of the cartridges that I'm using so I hope that makes sense okay so let's move on now to putting the album together because I've been waffling on for like 20 minutes now and we haven't started making so I need to kind of wrap up a little earlier I think I guess I like to talk been in lockdown too long okay so these are going to be the cards that are going to be put inside of the, the little pockets we're going to make and these are the pockets I've chosen eight of these one let's just double check two three four five six seven and eight set those aside I don't want to get them mixed up with my other cutouts and I'm going to leave these all at the top there let's move all these in okay so I have here all of my chipboard cut out already this is one millimeter chipboard and I do buy this from eBay I will try to remember to put a link if I forget to put um, a link for this gray board let me know it's really handy when people let me know okay so I've got all of the sizes um, written down and we have to put these in a particular order so I've written the dimensions and what they are so we're going to start off with it'd be best if I show you the flap we're going to work our way work our way around up and up like that so 
that is the layout so I'll quickly show you the layout before we start wrapping and then so we have the flap the top the back and then the base and then the front okay so we're gonna do that and I'm gonna wrap it in some gold glitter um, film it's a self adhesive film but I have used this before in some of my other mini albums and it doesn't stick too fabulously to the grey board um, here's an example I've had to go back in and glue it down now this is one of my MIDI albums this is the MIDI editions that I've popped inside a hard cover um, this is one with this is with a silver one um, so I've had to really go back in and, and peel it off and add extra glue around it just to get it down to stick so I'm going to reinforce it with um, extra sticky bits first so this is um, I, I'm sure that you've seen this before it's a non shed um, sticky back plastic um, glitter and you can get them in different um, colors okay and if you really want you can go to town I'm just gonna try and reach for it this is a wood effect one something that you would use for um, putting on a surface or a kitchen cabinet cover like fablon I guess you could even use that for covering your mini albums in the same manner that we'll be doing today there's loads of ideas so I'm just going to turn all these over and I'm going to add some double-sided tape Whoop. and again um, this video may go over an hour we have a lot to cover today so perhaps I shouldn't have spent so much time talking I'm just grabbing um, a block here I'm going for a block here with um, not a sharp edge but it's a 90 degree angle it's not rounded it's a proper right angle and I have some wide double-sided tape here I'm not gonna go to town with this I'm just gonna add it just like that and that cuts it so I don't even have to get my scissors out so let's do the same for this one so this is one of my favorite ways to do mini album covers and again as I said I'm not gonna go overboard with this stuff it's just to make sure that it all sticks properly now I got this from Amazon it's just extra wide wide double-sided tape and if you hear any funny noises my family is being quite noisy this evening I've already had to tell them to keep it down a few times about to go live, about to go live. Please, please, please be quiet. Okay, so that is all the double sided tape down. And I'm just going to grab my, I call this a squeegee, but it's just a giant bone folder thing. Uh, this is by We Are Memory Keepers. And I know a few of you have said you've already had this already, so um, I absolutely love this that's nice big areas or you could just use a ruler or a bone folder okay I should put this back where it belongs not straight over there somewhere I do that I just discard things okay so I'm gonna make sure that I have everything in the right place now turn it all over again okay top sorry flap top back base front good okay right let's move all this aside I'm going to unwrap this now I've cut this to size okay so I have cut this to size it's round about 20 inches long um, by this wants to do a roll up by 10 and a half inches wide okay so we're going to attempt this what could possibly go wrong with double-sided film on a live video what can go wrong okay this will either be magnificent and lovely and works or it could be a messy epic fail only time will tell I'm getting a bit nervous now so I'm just gently unwrapping all of this and it tends to kind of want to lose its um, rolling natures 
once you've taken off the backing I'm just gonna try and unstick myself from this now oh dear let's get this off there we go I hope I'm still in frame <laughs> Uh, it just wants to stick to me. Oh no. Yes, I'm free. Right, so let's un ungrab this one first. Take off the backing. That got a bit hairy, didn't it? Okay, so I'm going to leave round about an inch border all the way around. And I have, oh, we have our first accident. Let's take this off and I'm going to get stuck to it again. Ah, no, no, you don't. No. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to keep my thumb on there until I have something to lean against, like this little flap here. Right. There we go. I should really clear the decks a little bit more because this has gone on a little bit wonky uh, let's see if we can fix it nope we can't we're just going to have to go with that we'll be matting and layering anyway okay so now we need the top so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be leaving round about quarter of an inch gap um, it might be a bit too risky to get your ruler out because it does want to just stick to my fingers it's been a while since I've done this so I'll be an expert by the time I get back down to this end okay so now we have the back Oh no, Lynn says you can't bear to watch. <laughs> uh, hi, Amy. I'm glad you could join us. Oh, she's trying to tidy her craft room. I wish you all the best too. Okay, so let's try a different thing here. I seem to get my knuckles on here. So, Lynn, you don't need to close your eyes. Yay, no wrinkles that time. Okay, we did go a bit wonky there. Just do your best. Okay, so I'm leaving this gap here so that we have that closure room because we're also going to be adding another layer of paper on the inside as well. So it kind of needs that room there to kind of fold. Okay, so we now have the base. Okay, base is down. Yes, then Lynn, I've worked it out now, so you can look now. I've mastered it. It was a bit hairy at first, but we did we got there, we got there. Okay, let's pop the last one down. So the key is not to get your knuckles stuck to the bottom and to line up these two corners first just like that and if you're not as brave or you don't want to try this just go for a standard um, non-sticky <laughs> paper and you're good to go you, I would say wallpaper wallpaper would be perfect for this um, or if you have two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock or pattern paper that would work too so your drawing would be somewhere along the back and you probably have to trim a little bit off the edges okay so now I'm ready to trim the corners off I'll move these up a bit it's the sticky side is still out so I'm gonna trim the corners off here and I haven't taken
it all up to the edge there there is about an eighth of an inch I probably left a bit too much on there because this is this is quite a thin uh, film so I might take a little extra off that that one we'll find out if uh, I got that worked out okay There we go. Ah, so Debbie, oh, there's a lot of Debbies here. So we have Debbie Green Street here saying she's just bought her first set of album dies and she's excited, never made an album before. I wish you good luck with that one. There's plenty of um, tutorials um, out now and I will be adding to the mini album series on my channel as well for those albums. So there's plenty more to come. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the top section here. And all my mini album dies can be made with um, a hardback as well as just a, a plain um, non, non hardback. Okay. I do have a few wrinkles here, just do your best. This is going to be matted and, and covered, so I'm going to start with that one side, turn it over. I'm tempted to see what this looks like underneath. I'm wondering if it's going to be a disaster. Okay, so I'm just going to take my bow folder, if I can find it, here it is. And I'm just going to just push that in here, push those in, in the corners. And then I'm going to cover up the sides. Do exactly the same on the other side. I'm also going to press everything down once I'm done as well. So this is the corner I probably took a bit too much off. It seems to have done okay though. It's it's okay there we go yes I'm pretty pleased with that so let's see what it looks like on the other side oh that's crinkly isn't it right let's get that sorted I will have to just tidy that up the best I can but we're going to um, we're going to mat this anyway so the only visible sections are going to be around the outside and those bits seem to be okay Okay, so this is coming together now. Right, so this is going to fold up and make a little box like that. And we can also put some feet on the bottom. I have put some feet on the bottom. I've got some nice um, like crystal type cut buttons. These are from Stampin' Up! from probably 2015 I think so I've had those in my I think I still have a pot of those left okay so now we can move on to doing the middle bit so let's grab some cardstock I want to add some strength now to this so I'm going to use some cardstock here this is ruby now this is from craft stash and there is a link for it down below but the picture the thumbnail on the website it looks like it's this color but it's not ruby is this color i just wanted to say just in case you get worried that you're buying something bright pink okay so let's grab this out i'm gonna need two of these now i'm choosing cardstock over paper because paper's a little bit thinner and i, I do want to add some strength to this so this is going to fit on just like that and I need to trim this down so this measures eight and a quarter and I want an eighth of an inch all the way around so I just need to trim this down to an eight uh, eight inches put the ruler back or you'll lose it I'll grab my big trimmer out for this okay so you may have noticed the title I forgot to address that um, last Christmas or well, every Christmas I have a Christmas series but the Christmas just gone um, I was 
inundated with work. Uh, I had magazine commissions. I had two collections to design at the same time for Simply Made Crafts. I had um, the Paper Craft Society box that you've all just received. I designed that way back then. Um, so I was designing that too and then I had my son's birthday and it was Christmas and I literally ran out of time by day eight and I needed a rest as well so I have day nine, ten and eleven to do so this is day nine and this is a perfect opportunity now to um, scrapbook the Christmas memories or do mini albums for the Christmas memories okay so we are going to be adding that onto there um, yeah, I was a little sad to kind of just feel, I felt like I was abandoning it, but I knew I was headed for burnout and I knew that if I carried on, the series would not have been that great. So, and I want you guys to have kind of like the best of what I have to give, so I need to take breaks. So now is the perfect opportunity because it's, it may not be Christmas, I'm still very busy with work. Um, but I'm not celebrating Christmas at the same time and I am designing a little bit less because I'm in between a few things before it all gets mad again so I do have time for this to enjoy it and to come up with some nice ideas so um, yeah that's why it says the ninth day of Christmas 2019 on there so I'm just using glue for that one and now I'm just going to take my ruler again which I put back and I'm going to cut that at six and one eighth which I believe the Tim Holtz yes that will go to six and one eighth of an inch now I don't have to grab the big trimmer out again did I do this one at eight eight inches I did six and one eighth that should fit on there just test that out before I glue it's a little bit wonky but I can live with it Okay, so grab my big squeegee and press that down okay I'm gonna put I'm not gonna bend anything yet I'm gonna set this aside just to dry properly while we concentrate and put some put the lid on that I'll regret it if I don't Sorry if that was noisy. Um, let's move on to the pockets now. Okay, so I have eight here, so let me give you some measurements. Okay, so these pockets, you need eight of them and they measure eight and a quarter. So it's literally just the standard A4 width. And I've cut them down to four, four inches and there's eight of these here. So let me grab. On my scoreboards and I'm just going to double check where I scored these. So we are scoring at two and a quarter and six. So that's two and a quarter and six. So there's only eight of these to do so I can quickly do these. So I was preparing this project um, while watching Jeanette Lane live so that was a lot of fun she was eating more sweets she had some sweets last time and she has uh, she had sweets today and it was making me want to have some sweets so if you're not following Jeanette her um, YouTube channel I think it's just Jeanette Lane but she does a lot of lives so and, uh, 
and a lot of like um pocket pages she was the inventor of the pocket page as well which i think that's just amazing pocket letter that was it pocket letters she she invented pocket letters so if you love pocket letters definitely go over to her channel she owns the trademark for that I just think that's really impressive okay so that's everything scored so now we can fold bone folder your best friend Apologies if I'm going too fast. I just want to make sure that this is, a, is not a super long video and that we don't run out of time. Okay, so here we have a place here for us to glue. So I'll do all the gluing last. So in um, Jeanette's video that we watched today, she was eating, Lynn will remember, were they squishies or squashies? Is Lynn still here? They were by um, drumsticks, drumstick squashies or something. And she was making a traveller's notebook page in celebration of uh, Na Inter National Scrapbooking Day. And I know that there's quite a few social media people and YouTube creators that do the scrapbooking. They put a little eye in front to make it international just so that the rest of us aren't left out. I know it's National Scrapbooking Day in the USA. I'm not sure if it's Canada as well. Um, but yeah, a few of them do actually try to include the rest of rest of us in there so we can all, you know, join in. So If you ever wondered why, if you've seen it with a little tiny eye in front of the NSD, that's why. Yeah, the squishies, Lynn, or squashies, squishies. <laughs> they look really nice. I'm sure I've had them before. I'm sure my kids have had them and I've kind of, you know, stole one or two. Mum's perks, I guess. Okay, so let's get gluing. At squashies, yes, Louise, yes, Lu Louise was there too. Okay, so I'm hoping the stream is still going okay. It was doing something about every half an hour before, so fingers crossed. So I'm just going to add some glue along this line here, and then I'm going to glue that closed. So I'm using Cosmic Shimmer. Um, I haven't checked. Is this back in stock at Craft Stash yet? Does anybody know? I know I asked last week and I was told, no, it's still not in stock. So I'm just wondering if they've had a delivery yet. I'm still waiting on my new collection to arrive so that I can make samples. You'll be all glad to hear. So the minute that lands, it'll be sent to me and I'll be making samples. So this is definitely the quiet before the storm. Okay, we're almost there. So I'm going to have two rows of these as you can as you've guessed it's going to be a long um accordion and there's going to be two rows of these pockets as it opens up. So again, if you um, if you end up making one of these, I'd love to see it. Just share that on my Facebook page, which is Helen Griffin UK. I add a lot of my photos there. I am on Instagram as well, but I mostly just hang out on Facebook. And I also have a website as well, where all of my projects have their own page and cutting guide and the video embedded on there too. That's Helen Griffin co.uk okay so we have all of our pockets now so we're going to do a bit of prep I'm wondering whether I should use glue or double-sided tape do I have any double-sided tape um, knocking stuff over now I'm just looking for things here we go. I'm just looking for red tape. 
there we go just knocking everything over got some red tape here I will be using a mixture of the glue and the red tape so let's get the decision making process over with now so I'm going to divide these up here I have on the left here busy 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 and more plain relaxing calming less busy even these tartan I would class as a bold or a plain so that's busy patterned and that is another bold plain okay so if if I add all these together it's not too pleasing to the eye they're really nice but together it's a big ah it's a bit loud and then we have these two these four here which are the bold ones and they're a bit boring even though they're really nice individually they, 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 they don't blend together well they do blend together and they, they're a bit boring so what you would what, what a good thing to do is to divide up each busy pattern with a more plain pattern so I might just swap this over with um, this one and pop that um, yeah there oh I need to move one of these tartans away that's what was bothering me there we go yes that's better so as you can see let's lay this out again so as you can see they work really to, they work really nice together now together and not as um, just a plain pattern or lots of busy patterns everything's broken up and it works really well okay so I'm going to divide these up in that to that four and to this four here so let's glue these together I'm going to use double-sided tape and glue on the outside ones and I'm going to just use glue along the center to glue all of these pockets together so we still have the accordion effect both sides and there I won't do it too much they're joined together by the glue so again more or less a big line down the middle and then glue that onto the back of this one and just for um, continuity I'm having all of the fold lines at the back because you can kind of you can kind of see them so they're all going to be symmetrical in the album so I'm just going to have a quick look at the comments again yes so Louise saying it's still out of stock was it you that told me last week as well Louise I can't remember okay so what I'm going to do here I don't want the two tartans at the front so I'm just going to put this into reverse and then we'll start again so this is our, our first one maybe I should have done five we'll see how this goes they are going to be a little bit stretched out I would say let's have a quick look they are going to be a little bit stretched out so maybe another two more so we can cut those out I've done those already haven't I yeah okay I've mixed these up now we're cooking right let's get these on so I want to get this finished today I don't really want this to move on to a part two because I, I want to move on to day 10 I'm not too sure whether that will be a live uh, video or not ah Louisa yes it was her <laughs> that said last week that it was still out of stock <laughs> okay so I'm just going to cut another two of those okay I'm gonna use my big trimmer for this and I'm not too sure if I gave you the, the dimensions for this I'm sure I did I'm not sure I swear I did yes it's four inches by eight and a quarter so I still have let's go for another tartan 
So I'm just going through my offcuts now. So I haven't had to print anything new out. So there's one, and I'm going to go for this poncettia as well. And I'll be adding another poncettia on the front of this one as well. Okay, so we have two here. Let's get rid of the scraps. I'm going to be using these as page mats. So all the offcuts are really handy to use as well. So let's grab so two and a quarter by six. Two and a quarter by six. I talk to myself all the time like that. I'm sure you guys do as well. Okay, so let's fold this over. Just double check I did get this the right way. Oh no, these are... I definitely did this wrong. Right, it will be hidden, so let's grab this out again. Going to measure this. Two and a quarter by six. Have I cut this wrong? Two and a quarter. I scored it at that mark there. Right. Two and a quarter by six. Ah, that one fits, it was just this one. Okay. Doing my best to put things away. Okay, so this little line here, that's going to be hidden and it's on a, a patterned piece anyway, so it's going to be, it's not going to be visible. Okay, so let's get this glue on again. Okay, so I'm going to have five pockets. You can go for more. We'll see how it looks at the end. Okay, so I'm going to add this one here to that one. And I'm going to add this one. Oh, that one's on there already. Onto the back. Maybe I should add it. No, no. I'm just going to not overthink this because if I overthink it then I'm just going to go round in circles okay so now it's time for the tape This is a brand new one. I think I got a brand new one out last week. I don't know where that went. No. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway. So make sure you have this the right way round with all of the pockets at the top and not glued together. There we go. It's going to open like that. And up through the centre. I'm just going to add this tape. It's quite thin. If you have wider tape, like a half inch, that would be perfect. I'm just going to do two layers, two rows, sorry. Just on both sides. So I'm hoping this uh, Christmas theme is cheerful, something different as well. It's a bit out of season, and it's not exactly Christmas in July yet, is it? So I don't know, maybe I'll finish this series off just before Christmas in July starts. I 
Uh, hi, Alan. Yes, you'll be able to watch on the um, on the replay. I've only made one mistake, or one and a half mistakes. The half mistake was the the wrinkly cover. So I'm classing that as a half mistake because I learned from that and finished off well. And I messed up one of these pockets as well, so just a wrong score line. So that's pretty good going for me. I've lost the end. Where is it? There it is. Okay, I'm just going to grab my bone folder now and just uh, burnish all that down, both sides. Okay, put those aside now and we're going to work on this again now. The glue's had a chance to dry, so I'm going to grab my, I'm going to use this, I'm also going to show you how to use your ruler with this as well. We need to start bending up our crease lines now, our folding marks, our folding lines. So I'm just lifting that up and just carefully pressing that down while I fold this upwards. Just like that. There we go. And then I'm going to find the next one. Exactly the same. I'm not going over too far at this point. This has less, this um, adhesive self-adhesive backing has a less chance of um, cracking like it would if you were using paper. Okay, so um, the next one is here. Let's fold that up and again I'm just using my ruler now. And you can use your ruler to do this. Don't press too hard because you may go through the card or the paper that you've used and you can use your bone folder too. So this is the last one. I just turned it over now, just lifting this up. There we go. And that's using the bone folder. Okay. So it should look something like this and hopefully yours will be wrinkle free. I'm not even sure if the camera is picking up the wrinkles. Let's have a look. I could have got away with it if I hadn't mentioned it. Nope. Ah, the wrinkles are there. The wrinkles are there. Okay. So you should now have something that looks like this. Okay. So now we're going to do magnets and this is going to be the flap. I'm going to put the flap there. I have some magnets here. You can get these off um, from Amazon. These are like uh, one millimeter thick magnets. So I'm going to take off. I've got loads of dry glue. It, it annoys me. It does. I'm constantly picking it off. Okay, so I've got one magnet there, one magnet there, and where's the bag? Here it is. If you want to be um, frugal with your magnets, you can use washers. You can use a magnet and a washer to stick together as well. So let's move these aside. If they bash together, they might smash or crack or break. So we don't want any violent um, collisions. So I'm just looking for my glue dots now. Glue dots are going to be very handy for this. So any glue, glue dots that you have, you can buy them in a roll. These are from Sticks 2. So I'm going to take the first magnet. And if you want to use Velcro, if you're safety conscious, use Velcro. Can't get that off. Oh, come on, off you come. Yay, okay. Right, so we need to have this one here popped there. 
and we're going to put a mat over here to cover it I'm not sure if that's truly in the center it's not is it let's move let's just do this again don't put that magnet near the other one it's like in Ghostbusters don't cross your lines okay now I'm going to gently put this one on and it will find its own polarity now what I'm going to do is add these are quite handy from sticks too because you can take these off I'm going to add a glue dot now to the other magnet give that a pressing and then just carefully peel that off it does help to kind of get your thumbnail or a nail holding it down while you do that okay so let's close this up I'm going to add this to this fold here before I close it so I'm making sure that it folds okay everything is lined up and then I'm going to press this down there we go so we now have a magnet closure there we go and again you can add um, a ribbon round it as well or you can add extra bits of velcro here I love the velcro as well I use these ones here these are from Amazon as well okay so we are going to be covering this with paper okay so now we're ready to start adding the accordion pockets so I'm not going to overthink this again so let's have a quick practice run a dry run first it's always good to have a dry run ruler pencil and I'm going to this is the the base here so this is the back section so I'm going to mark up I'm thinking a quarter of an inch we could probably go down to an eighth I'm gonna go I'm gonna do an eighth from this line here I'm gonna try not to get my head in the way just a little pencil mark you may not be able to see mine but you should be able to see yours okay so let's get so we're going to add that to the pencil mark there and it's going to be lined up directly with that red lining card and this is going to go exactly the same place just like that I'm hoping that makes sense so let's move everything aside and let's get these backings off and I'm also going to add some glue because these are going to be like stretched and pulled apart so I want maximum strength on this if you want to try a glue gun as well but you will have less wiggle room so I'm going to do that and then line everything up And adding um, glue will add extra strength to your tape that you're using but it will also give you a bit more of maneuverability room and time whereas if you were just using the tape then um, it would it would stick down and that would be it okay I can see oh, there it was down a bit low so I am just going to go with this first one as my main guide now so I can see these two are straight these get everywhere yep straight and straight lined up okay so now you can see that these are going to now attach to the other side just like that so as you can see there's going to be I'm, I'm, I'm only going to be using five on each side for this one but you can literally put another two maybe three if you add too many I think I added too many pockets on this one 
and it it really does like to open up so the less pockets you have the more the tighter it's going to be so I, I think that that amount of stretch would be ideal so it's up to you how many pockets that you do want to add but I would say minimum five six would be a good number six or seven okay so this can get another this could be a potentially another hairy moment so I'm going to use glue as well on this you might want to close your eyes Lynn if you're not asleep already I think Lynn's still around yes she is Okay, let's pop some more glue on here. Definitely running low on this now, but I do have one more bottle. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good for that. Okay, it's just when I run out of my second bottle, I'll be a bit, oh no, I'm running out. Okay, so I want to have this bottom one here lined up perfectly with this line here where we have the border and the same height as the previous this side here where my finger is so I'm hoping I get this right first time I think I'm good press that down that's where the adhesive is in here and the reason I'm not gluing the whole pocket down is because if you glue the whole pocket down this pocket almost becomes unusable on the end so we're continuing with the thin strip so let's do the same on this one round about an eighth of an inch up there we go press oh no I pressed down too soon it's a bit wobbly still because of the glue I think that idea worked too well Okay, so here we have our accordion, it's a double accordion folder and it closes just like so and you can see all these on the side, that's come undone, let's pop that back on. I think I used too much glue. Okay, so let's just quickly pop that aside. I'm just gonna grab the inserts now. So I have a corner rounder here. You can, this one's by X-Cut. Um, you can also use, I'm just trying to grab it. The We Are Memory Keepers uh, corner chomper. The, cro the crocodile corner chomper, I love this. You could do a whole bunch at the same time. But this one is the X cut one. I also love this one too. Um, ruler. I'm going to give you some measurements now. So I'm going to have to cut another two. But I can do that another time. So <clears throat> these measure three and five eighths by four and a quarter. And these are going to fit inside these pockets. just like so so I may trim off um, another eighth of an inch actually because when these open these stretch and they they get smaller as you can see they do get smaller so I'm going to trim an eighth of an inch off so your new measurement is going to be three and a half that makes it easier actually Let's quickly get those done. Three and a half. So um, I'm going to keep my T 
tenth episode of the Christmas series, which will be the next one coming up. Um, I'm going to keep it to memory keeping. So I'm I haven't planned it yet, so I'm open to suggestions. So please let me know in the comments right now on the live stream and also if you're watching on the replay let me know there as well and if you are watching on the replay hello i'm glad you could join us um if you just want to pop on and, and say hi on the replay that's fine i tend to say hello back anyway um, i read all of the comments and i do my best to reply to most of them okay so i've trimmed that off and now i'm going to corner around everything I love this let me see if I can find a spare piece of paper on the other side you can pop that in just like that and it does an inverted corner it's really really cool okay so we're going to be having the round corners on these so we're on the home run now with this we just got to Matt um, some areas, Matt the outside. Oh, I'm going to go around that way. I'm only rounding the top. I'm going to keep these square. And I'm going to be adding a couple of photos onto these as well, just a few um, decoration ideas. Okay, so let's have a look and see if this fits in okay. That's a better fit. Pop that aside, I'm loving how that is looking. So let's do a quick layout. So this is going to be like a miniature scrapbook layout. So this is a little National Scrapbook Day thing. So let's have a look at the photos that I have here. Just changing screens for a moment okay so here we have some cookies and here we have naughty elves so they broke into the fridge one year and wrote naughty things on the milk and on all the rest of the food that was in there so yes they had a good time with that we have we have two elves and here they are they're drinking daddy's beer so that's mr g's beer naughty elves and then the next day they apologized and they brought some gold chocolate coins and they said sorry we drank your dad's beer and my children wrote back thanks dad didn't find it very funny <laughs> we love you <laughs> so yeah uh, mr g was pretend annoyed that they drank his beer so when you're when you're young you kind of can't really tell when you're faking it okay so another one one got one locked the other one in the jar and then he farted so for this one what you do is you put a tissue at the bottom and if you put some peppermint oil on it and then you pop your elf in and you do your little message and screw it screw it on tight and they absolutely love this one because you know obviously they wanted to smell what it smelled like and it smells of peppermint so it wasn't really a bad smell so that was a funny one and then that's me on christmas day and that was uh, pigs in blankets there. If you don't know what pigs in blankets are, they're little um, cocktail sausages wrapped in streaky bacon and then you bake them for half an hour. Those came out really nice. There we have a glass of champagne in front of the tree and then we have hot chocolate as well. So I printed this out on normal cardstock but I will be printing these out again on um, the presentation paper and the resolution on that would be really nice okay so let's do a quick layout and then we can pop all of our cards in and then map the outside so i've lost something and i can't remember what it was okay here we are i'm sure you know that feeling you've lost something but you can't remember what you lost so there's absolutely no hope in remembering what you're looking for I'm just going to read some of the comments now because I've been waffling on and you're all still here, aren't you? I'm not talking to myself. So I will be reading all of your comments afterwards as well. So, so yes, you're all entertaining yourselves. That's really good. Yes, that's a good idea. Using um, a mini album as an advent calendar as well. So... 
that is something that I will probably end up making this year because I have my um, advent windows that you can use in the mini albums too so I will probably be doing some sort of version of that and you can pop photos behind the windows as well so here are some of the nutcrackers this one spells merry I have no idea what the time is my family have done quite a good job of not making noise it's amazing ah yes we're still here it's quarter to ten so let's hopefully get this wrapped up in round about 20 minutes okay so that says merry and we have all of these banners here and again you can print these out in all sorts of different sizes the smaller ones will have a smaller resolution whereas the papers are pretty good okay so what photo shall we do and that one's quite nice I think I'll do we'll start with this one let's start with me it's the only picture of me this Christmas or that Christmas <laughs> I made it onto one picture <laughs> let's start off with that one so let's add I'm just going to use um, just a tape runner for this Okay, so I cut this out with a white border all the way around. And I'm thinking there are so many other elements to this that like you have all the, like you have Santa Clauses, you have Ponsettias and all of these images here are available individually and you get you can do a wreath as well. So I just printed off just a small selection. You can tell I like the nutcracker. Oh, there's another one hiding there another diddy one they look quite good all lined up okay I'm getting distracted so I'm thinking maybe something like this we'll do the green one and then maybe a nutcracker so that one that's a bit too distracting we'll go for that one maybe yeah that one's cute so we'll stick that down so more glue This is a tiny miniature scrapbook layout here and then I can add a date here if I wanted or a little bit of um, journaling or a label to explain the photo or just the date that it was taken on so what I'm doing is I'm just layering up and anchoring um, the nutcracker with a little banner behind it so that is our first layout and you can also use some of your off cuts as well on the other side so you uh, just trim that down they're almost the perfect size I'd say okay so on the back you can add some more photographs I may just add that one and I might I might just add one of these there you go tidings of comfort and joy on the back pop that there and you can add another banner on the top so let's get this stuck down So you can layer up your patterned papers underneath as well. So let's pop that on there. Just gonna leave that so it can flap upwards as well. And this top section here, that's going to be visible on um, the top of the album here. So that should have dried now. So let's pop all of the cards inside. So we have our double sided there, that looks quite nice. So let's pop this one in here. Maybe I will add glue just so that it doesn't get caught. There we go. There's our first one done. So let's get all the other cards in now and I'll continue to decorate all of these with all the other photos. This is something you would probably need to do on a separate day so you've spent a lot of energy and decision making on making the album and now you just want to spend time, that's got caught, and now you just want to spend time enjoying doing your photos and your decorating so you might want to save that for another day. It depends how tired you get. 
so the last one there doesn't have one because I need to cut another two so let's get these in you possibly could even get another or fit two cards in here at a time if you cut them a little thinner that one needs to go down a bit more I think some of the glue has glued some of the pockets shut at the bottom there we go and then pop that one in there we go so here we have our little cards that we can take out I'll probably swap this one with this one you can have a play around you can add um, advent numbers on there as well so if you have 12 pockets you can have a day for each side there we go right so let's get matting now so let's get some more measurements um, I haven't pre-planned this so I'll be doing the measurements as I go I think it, sometimes it's nice for you to kind of work out how I make my measurements sometimes especially if you're new to this so um, normally I would have everything pre-cut or pre-measured so this needs to measure 8 by 2 and <clears throat> Ooh, two and five eighths. So I've forgotten the first number. Eight inches. Two eight inches by two and five eighths. Yes. Move this aside. I'm gonna use my big my big one again. Okay, so for the front I've got some more here that I've printed out. So two and five eighths. So the the eighth the five eighths is the next eighth after the half mark. That's how I remember it. So this one needs to be eight inches. And that is going to go on there. Ooh, well, maybe I should have done that at a two and a half. We'll try two and a half. It's a good job I didn't cut off too much. For once, I erred on the side of caution. Perfect. I like that. And I'm going to do another one for... Well, oh, actually, that's going to be on the inside. This one's going to be on the outside. So that's going to be two and a... I'm going to cut this all the way down to eight, so I don't have to cut it at eight, like four times. That's going to be two and a half. That's going to go on there. So let's get that glued down right now. Glue, here it is. Okay, so don't forget in the description box after this is finished, I'll be writing down all of the dimensions for everything today. And I'll also be doing a blog post project page for this on my website as well. So that will appear probably in the next couple of days. Okay, so now we're going to open this up and we're just going to glue this one on there I need to make this a little bit shorter because this part here this red lining measures eight so I'm gonna go to eight sorry seven and three quarters and that should fit a lot better and I'm just gonna take an eighth of an inch off of that one too So this is the magnet side now. I'm just going to pop that there, perfect. So you can carry on matting and layering. I'm just going to do a basic mat and layer just to show you that we can cover up those magnets. And again, for safety reasons, if you don't want to use them um, around children, if they're going to be having a look at this, you can use Velcro instead. Just going to add some extra glue just to that area this one will have a habit of wanting to lift up because of the little mountain that the magnet creates 
giving that a really good press. There we go. Now, I think I know why I put these magnets away and I really found them yesterday, because they're not as strong as my other magnets wherever those are. Here we are. These are my other magnets. No, nope, that's not them. These are my other magnets. They come in a box just like this. They're eight, eight millimeters by one millimeter thick. These are stronger than the ones that I'm um, using right now. So I may have to change this up. If I'm adding another layer, it may not stick. So I'm going to switch out those magnets with my other ones. So I'm going to use those other weak magnets for something else. So let's put our front feature on the front now and then that will be today's class over with. Okay so I was thinking it would be a good opportunity for me to use my Ponsettia die again. I've made a really big mess around here, it is like Christmas. Okay so we're going to be using this die today, so this is um, one of my own. This is the Ultimate Ponsettia die and it's back in stock because it's sold out. It's sold out on Craft Stash and also on Hachanda, but it is back. So I have some green cardstock, let me find that. Here it is, this is a Stampin' Up cardstock, I did a Stampin' Up order. So this one is Mossy Meadow, it's one of my favourite greens. And I've carried on using the Ruby Red using the foundations card the ruby color i love that color so i've already cut out a few already so i just need to do a few more leaves so i haven't used the largest i've used the smallest of the three so i've done two of the the largest one the th the the second largest i've done two exactly the same because you tend to have um green behind all of the red because this isn't actually the flower this is still part of the leaf even though it's red so and then we're going to layer these up just like so so I just need to die cut some more of these little fir branches here and I do have another one here and I also need to do the center the bract as well the bract is actually the flower so I'm just going to grab this out so a bit of die cutting on here too so I have some cardstock left over from my die cutting, so let's go for this one. I'm so glad this is back in stock, so it's back just in time for my Christmas in July series as well. Um, where is it? Oh. I try and be economical when I'm die cutting everything out. Run this through. So, um, Lynn, you're still awake. That's amazing. I'm sure you'll sleep really well tonight. I'm just going to grab some, what colour should I use? I think I'm, I'm going to go for a gold. Just trying to find some. I'm delve into this. This is Gold Pack Luxury Cardstock. I think I used this last week. So, um, what should I go for? I'm sure I have some off cuts I could. I could use. I'm going to go for a satin. Half the process is just decision making and So, oh no, another thing I like to use to get this lot off is just a scraper. 
gets off all those little bits that stick it won't come off okay so I'm going to do more than one of these to stick. There we go. I think I'm going to do three. I'm just going to fold them up. So I'm not going all the way through. I'm just going enough to run that under the runner and then back again. Might have to grab my little tool out again just to get that off. There we are. away right so now we can start assembling okay so you can use um, a flower tool like one of those ones with the big balls on them um, this one's by tonic but I think crafters companions do one as well you can you can round those off with a bit of foam underneath but I'm just going to distress them by bending them and folding them just like that Oh no, sorry Lynn, didn't like the scraping noise, sorry. Are you wearing headphones? Ah, oh, thank you Emma. Just enjoying watching, nice and relaxing. Okay, so that is our first, oh, I've just noticed I still have something that I made back in October using the Ponsettia dye. I've still got it, I haven't eaten it. It's a chocolate orange and I've just done the um, green just to make a pumpkin so that's really handy so any time of year is there a use by date on this oh it'll be on the box I threw away I'm still going to eat it okay so let's carry on doing this ah uh, welcome Jackie she's just watching me live for the first time um, if, if you want to watch the beginning, you, there'll be a replay after um, I go off live, so that will be available to watch. If it doesn't appear immediately, it will eventually appear. Sometimes it disappears off into YouTube world until it decides to churn it back out again. So I'm just folding all of these up here. Now, I think the only place you can get this die set is a craft stash at the moment. So yeah, Lynn says chop goes on forever, unless you eat it. <laughs> okay, so I've got all of my layers cut up now. Um, you can sponge them if you want. I think I did a bit of um, sponging on this one. There's a few darker areas. Okay, so let's get these glued together. So I'm just going to add a bit of glue to the largest. I'm just going to alternate them round so that there's like minimal gaps. There we go. Just continue folding up. Let's make this really distressed. I still have my poncettia from Christmas. It's on my kitchen, um, counter, not counter, kitchen windowsill. You can keep them alive especially if you do um, an indoor plant food once a week. In fact, I need to repot it because it has it has grown. It's dropped all of its original leaves now, um, but it's grown all new ones and they're growing quite nice and big again. I don't think I'll be able to make it change colour again because I don't have that patience where you have to, in October or November, you have to give it 12 hours of sunlight and darkness every day, like 12 hours each. To make, to make it change colour. So here is our Ponsettia. I absolutely love that. And now here are the bracts. So I've done these in the gold. I can't pick them up. They're so fiddly. There we go. Right, so I'm just going to bend these upwards so that they look like 
dead spiders. Now while I do this, I do have a spider story. We have um, or had um, a false black widow living in the corner of our bathroom and Mr G last week got rid of all of its cobwebs. So we were wondering what, what, what it was going to do next. It, it was living there for about a year. Kind of, it kind of just wanted to be in that corner and then um, concentrating here and then uh, he went to the bathroom one day and we've called we called her Sheila because she was kind of like the resident spider and um, he found her by the the open window so he tried to kind of knock her out to kind of encourage her to go out and she rolled up into a ball and fell and tried to pretend to play dead and um, so I thought, you know what, she's pretending to be dead. I'm going to just get a piece of paper, just like this. And she was like this. So I thought, right, I'm going to go down. I got, I got her like that and she was still pretending to be dead. And I went down the stairs. I got to the back door. And um, I couldn't get past the back door because Mr G was telling our son Jamie not to wash his hands in the... Um, the water butt water to clean his hands because <laughs> it wasn't because he's not clean is it really I know it's rainwater but still it can be quite stagnant in there and so I couldn't get past and she lobbed the dead the pretend dead spider came alive on my piece of paper and she was crawling around and then I panicked like this and then she went on me and I was screaming and I knocked her off and she went in the garden and um yeah the whole family including Mr. G, Bello, belly laughed. They thought it was the funniest thing they'd ever see. And they were laughing for a good hour afterwards. So I just proper panicked with this false widow spider crawling all over me. Like, Ugh. Anyway, she's out the house. She ran away and she's gone. Right, so we're going to pop this on the front. I am going to add another mat underneath here. And then I'll make sure that for the thumbnail photographs and for my blog post, uh, the project page for this, it's going to um, be finished all the way around. So I'm going to add them just like this. I'm doing a dry run again. So maybe I was thinking maybe I should have just done a different... This is quite busy. Maybe the tartan would have been better behind. So I don't know if it's going to be too late to change that. I'd just stick another one over the top, couldn't I? Yeah, I think I might do that. I think I might do that. It's okay to change your mind. If something doesn't look right as you go, you know, it's okay to kind of just take a step back and re-examine it. Okay, so which way does this paper go? Let's cut this all the way down to eight and it was two and five eighths I think double check oh no two and two and three quarters it's always good to double check as well going to cover it. Let's just cover this up. Oh, I did that too much. You see? Oh dear. Let's measure again. Two and a half. Right, I'm not getting my big trimmer out again. Use a little one. There we go. Right, before I glue that down, let's try the poncetia. Oh, that Yes, I like that. I like the Santa one too, but this one looks a lot better.
Okay, so let's get this popped on. So I'm just going to add some glue just to the centre here. Get that on there. And then I'm going to be symmetrical with these. I'm going to add two at the bottom. And then we have the two smaller ones. This all comes in the, the same die set. And I'm going to pop these up there. Okay, dry run looks good. I'm going to add some glue to the front and the back, just on the end, the ends there that are going to be tucked in. Um, I can do this for all of them. And because I'm using glue, I can kind of move them around still. Okay. This one still has a few bits in there, but they're going to be tucked in. So we're good. And if you want to use different shades of green cardstock, then that you know, then that would really add to the effect as well. Um, it's kind of hard to find different shades of the same card. So I'm thinking Paper Mill Direct uh, or um, Stampin' Up would be a really good choice there for different shades of the same colour. Okay, so that is the, the majority of this album finished now. So I just need to continue to mat around the rest of this wrap here, of the cover. And I need to change out the magnets to the strong ones. And I also need to decorate the rest of these cards here. And again, the dimensions will be added after the live stream has finished. And then this is one of the decorated ones. And you can have numbers and things and journaling. And you could probably fit an, like two cards in one as well. So yeah, you can fit more than one in there. And there is a little bit of space if you have tabs. You can add some little um, file tabs on the top there just to add a bit more decoration. Or you can add, you know, different things at the top there. You can staple that on as well. So there's those different ideas. You can have some little nutcrackers sticking up the top there as well and you can decorate the inside too so that is today's project that is the double accordion festive version of that so i really love how that's turned out and i really can't wait to get this one finished because it's kind of i think it's gonna look really great finished i have all of these cards that i can add in there too so i'm just gonna have a quick chat with you guys and then it will be time to finish so i haven't been looking at the comments so I wonder what you're all talking about. So, thank you, Jackie. Yes, the tartan looks um, a lot better. So, you did it two and a half. Yes, <laughs> I can. I can almost hear you shouting at your screen, Lynn. Oh, you did right. So, tart, tart told you the tartan was the right one. So, let's find where you said it was. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, you were right then, the tartan was the best one. So Emma's saying you could carefully unwrap it and refill with a polystyrene ball of the same size. No one would know. Oh, that's a good, I'd have to get this. Um, I presume it's, I presume you're talking about this. <laughs> so I'd have to fold all of these sides up. I have to really carefully unwrap it. This might be the size of a bath bomb as well. Maybe I could wrap up a bath bomb might have a bit of a funny smell to it but but yeah that would that means I get to eat the chocolate and still have the example so yeah this one traveled to Hachanda with me and back again that was um October November time so um yeah it's been there that long and I haven't eaten it at Christmas yeah so I, I'm working my way through um this is my latest bag of treats and goodies I dish them out I eat some but I also dish them out to the kids so they I also have this as well snowballs I love these these are by Tunnix I think the Tunnix factory is closed at the moment so I don't have I have some tea cakes downstairs I don't have any up here but I fancied these snowballs so I bought them last month before all the shops closed so I'm just rereading through some of your comments again. 
So Alan's saying that supermarkets have eggs real cheap. My partner is a key worker in the supermarket and able to get £10 of eggs for about £1. Uh, Lynn's saying no headphones, just don't like noises like that. Yeah, I can be a bit funny with um, chalkboards. Never used to bother me, but it does now. Put the tiny die away now, or it will get lost. Okay, I'm putting it away. There we go, it's back in the envelope, put away safely. Although when I was tidying, I did find, I think these are from my own die sets. Uh, I found this one. And this one, I found these on the floor, and magnet stuck to it. This one here, I think this one is from the hexagon clutch bag, and I think these might be from this might be a Christmas berry. I think I don't know what that is. Okay, so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time over the next week or so trying to find the coordinating die sets for those as well so yes the kids know where to find treats and they know that there'll be consequences if they take them without asking and they had to learn that the hard way oh yes Debbie that's a good idea could use an orange smelling bath bomb Ah yes, so Casey, this, um, she's saying that um, I have not had any of those. Interesting though, seeing things from another country. Okay, shall we open it? Shall we open it? All I need is one yes and I'll open it. I can easily make another one because I've got the die set here. So I could just reuse some of that. I'm trying to think if I have another one somewhere. Heard in saying, uh oh, Maggie's, that's a great idea. Um, let me think. Do I have another? Oh no, I ate it. I did, I ate it. <laughs> I had one, but I ate it. Okay, let's open this one then. Okay, let's get... Oh, I don't even need to take that off. Right, so this is a Terry's Chocolate Orange and... Was it the 80s? Well, it must have been the 90s. We had uh, Dawn French. She's a, um, a British comedian. She did the uh, the adverts on the telly for this. And it was, um, they're not Terry's, they're, they're mine. They're not Terry's, but because it's Terry's chocolate orange here. Okay, and then the other quote was, don't, uh, what is it? Whack it, don't tap it. Whack it, as you'll find out. Okay, so I take the sticker off, and then this unwraps, just like so, and then we have a chocolate, is it chocolate flavored orange? No, orange flavored chocolate. There we go, and it's in segments, and there's a core of chocolate going through all the way to the top, that's fallen apart. So to separate them, you'd give it a good whack. I'm hoping no one's, um, let me just cover the microphone a little bit. Give it a good bash like that, and then it all falls open. And then you have all of these orange segments here. There we go, and these all come out like that. And there, this bit here, this is the centre where they're all joined together. So you always get one segment with a couple of bits of extra chocolate on. So as you can see, that is patterned like a segment of an orange. And there's loads here, so you can share them if you want, but I don't think many people do. But this is something that we get in our stockings every single year along with a real orange as well and this seems to be okay and it smells really nice like chocolatey orange so that is a terry's chocolate orange and they are incredibly like british everyone has to have one at christmas and um at some points throughout christmas shopping time um they get reduced in price so tesco's they sometimes have it for three pounds sometimes they have it for two pounds but i always buy mine when it goes down to one pound um, a box as well. I would love to show you a Terry's chocolate orange box, but I, 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 I recycle those. because they're easier to store and, and everything. So the kids love them in their, their Christmas stockings. So <laughs> Alan's saying you can always smell the orange. Good job you can't smell it. Yes, it is quite late at night for midnight eating. 
I've made everyone hungry now. You're all going to be on a, a chocolate hunt. I'm hoping you have chocolate. Ah, so Rosalind is saying they're hard to find in America. They are quite heavy as well. They are quite heavy. But they are really, really nice. I can only eat a few at a time now. But now I've opened it, I might just watch a film later and after I've tidied up this huge mess. So, all right, so Lynn is um, dairy free. No, I don't, I, don't, I don't think they make dairy free chocolate oranges. That could be a next one that they might bring out. They do, um, is it a dark chocolate orange? I think I've seen before as well. So Kayaf is saying she actually has one in her drawer downstairs. So tempted to crack it open, but the youngest is still awake and I'm not sharing. That's a very good point. Yeah, wait till everyone's asleep, but just be really quiet when you whack it. So Lynn's saying she has chocolate Easter eggs still. Yes, I do as well. I've been working my way through them. Where's my latest one? I have a latest egg that I'm going through. Here we go. This was a galaxy. So yeah, that's how much I've got of that egg left. So Lynn's saying, I think I might have to eat some. Okay, so I'm going, this is my ongoing chocolate. So I'm going to add five and then I'm gonna wrap the rest up. Move that aside, I'm gonna wrap the rest up and then um, I'll share that out with the kids tomorrow. It's Sunday lunch tomorrow so they can have a little treat after that. So Alan saying the red box is the dark chocolate. I've never actually tried the dark chocolate. Um, yeah, I've never tried it. Is it nice? Does the orange make up for the dark chocolate or something? I don't. It's because it's because I don't really like dark chocolate. I think, but if the the orange kind of makes it taste nice, then I might like it. So yeah, you're welcome, Casey. I'm hoping one day you get to try one. And definitely if you come over to the UK when there's like lockdowns all over and, and everything and we're able to kind of go places again, if you do ever come over here, they're easy to find in the supermarkets as well. So definitely stock up on some of the chocolates there. Even if you have to kind of like, you know, mail it to yourself at home, you don't have to add it to your suitcase. So Alan's saying he has four left over. That's a lot. They do a white chocolate one. Oh my goodness. Let's hope they all come back um, during Christmas this year. I might have to just buy them all and just do another YouTube video on all the different types of chocolate oranges. <laughs> so Lynn's saying she likes dark chocolate and orange together. So that's a good combination. So Alan Zane's partner's red, uh, allergic to orange. Red for danger. <laughs> So yes, so that was today's fun. This is the project I'm going to be popping off now. So um, there's there's absolutely still loads of you watching. So it's kind of, I literally have to tear myself away from you guys. So I've been looking forward to this all day and now it's come to an end. So this is, this is the worst bit is saying goodbye. And you know, especially as so many people are tuning in and watching and I'm not, and I've stopped crafting now as well. So I guess you all want a segment of this. I don't know, maybe I should, um, maybe I could do a giveaway, I guess, and send a couple of chocolate oranges out. So yeah, perhaps maybe when I get to 30, 30,000 subscribers, I'll do a giveaway and um, I'll probably pop in a few chocolate oranges. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and help me get to 30k. Sorry, Debbie. <laughs> Sorry, Lynn, yes, a lot of chocolate talk, so that's kind of what makes my world go around. I love chocolate. Love chocolate. I've always got something. I like to craft with chocolate as well, so like make little boxes to put the chocolate in and things like that. That was kind of um, my earlier days on YouTube as well, so yeah. Okay, so everyone's saying thank you, so that's going to be my cue now to kind of 
go so don't forget um there's going to be a blog post um for this project the dimensions will be added down below soon after i've gone live and all the information will be there and if you're not following me on facebook um i'm helen griffin uk if you want to join me on there and um, that's kind of where i po post most announcements and when things come back in stock and everything like that so um thank you all for joining me i hope you all have a wonderful weekend and i hope that you're all well and you're not too you know um how to put this uh lonely i guess i don't know i can't think of the right words but i'm hoping it's all going all right for you all in lockdown and everything so i will see you all again next saturday for my next live and again if you have any ideas for my next uh christmas project let me know in the comments i'd love to hear your ideas so thank you all for joining me and i'll see you again soon <laughs>